Hey guys, Laser Focus Wow here, and in this video, I want to share with you the five must-know Demon Hunter Mythic Plus tips if you're gonna push high keys. These are some of the things that I missed in my early 20 keys, actually, and so I'm sure some of you might need a reminder or might not be familiar with some of these things that I'm about to mention here. So hopefully all of these tips, or at least some, will be beneficial for you and help improve your gameplay. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So my tip number one is that you can fell rush sideways. I don't know if all of you guys knew that. Uh, I learned that as I was playing my Demon Hunter more and more. I did not know that right away. And so this comes super, super handy if you're fighting wide bosses, which includes raid bosses as well, by the way. But if you're fighting bosses like the final boss of DOS, so the other side, or if you're on the platform, you can't fell rush forward, right? If you fell rush forward, you're going to waste half a second or a second of DPS because then you'll have to turn, fell rush forward, and then turn again, right? So you're going to be missing that half a second of auto attacks, which why not get some free auto attacks in? So what you can do instead is if you hold your strafe left or right button and then click fell rush, you're going to fell rush sideways, right? Without losing a single millisecond of DPS, guys. So super, super useful stuff. Again, especially on white bosses, uh, white wide bosses like in uh, Plaguefall, the last boss, like in Spires of Ascension, the second to last boss, you know, the big white uh, white guy, uh, Doss. And this is especially I'm talking about people who are talented into the uh, fell rush talent, right, where you deal 500% bonus damage. Otherwise, you don't really have to fell rush, but I'm talking about if you have to use fell rush for the talent. This is a perfect opportunity for you to use it without losing DPS. All right, so my tip number two is that you can use jump to your advantage to avoid some shit on the ground. So for example, in Tazavish, at the beginning of the dungeon where you have the swirly lasers going around in a circle, you can use jump to get over that. Actually, any class can, but as a DH, it's just easier. You can jump higher, you can jump from farther away, you can dunk like an NBA player basically, right? That other classes can't do. So you can use that to your advantage to avoid some of the shit on the ground. So pay attention in your next dungeon. If you see some crap on the ground, sometimes you are able to jump over it. So put those wings to good use. My tip number three is that you should never end your I-beam early. So this was huge for me, guys. So I learned this kind of late, guys. I learned it like in my 23, 24 keys, right? Can you believe that? So what I used to do is I used to end I-beam early, half a second or a second early, to move to avoid a very you know low damage mechanic or to interrupt somebody like first, because I got to interrupt first, right? I want to get that fury, whereas somebody else could easily have interrupted if it's only like one boss or if it's a mechanic that doesn't do that much damage. But if you guys are unsure about why you shouldn't end it early, take a look at the tooltip. So open up your I-beam, tooltip right now and read what it says because I didn't I did not read what it said and I paid for it I suffered for it in all those keys I've done before so if you don't end I beam early if you cast the full thing you're gonna get 15% haste which is huge guys it's huge for us right versatility and haste are huge for DHS I didn't do that so my DPS increased drastically when I actually started casting I beam to the full because you cast a lot of I beams so you could potentially, you know, it's possible if you're super lucky, you could just have 15% haste the whole time. That's half a blood loss. So really, really useful stuff. And that means planning ahead. That means when, when you want to cast Ivy, make sure you get in a position where you don't have to move for two seconds. All right. Because what I used to do is just cast it to get a few seconds extended on my sinful brand. And then I just move. No problem. Right. Ads are going to die anyway. I don't need the full duration. Wrong, I missed the 15 second hate uh, the 15% haste buff, which was huge. So make sure you plan ahead, get in position to cast your full I beam, and then you will get rewarded for it. All right, so that's my tip number three. My tip number four is that it absolutely sucks that Vengeful Retreat can't get us out of roots. If a DH is rooted or snared, we're kind of fucked, right? We can't get out. But Vengeful Retreat does have an upside in that it kind of kind of acts like a blessing of freedom in that you can get out of slow. So this comes especially in handy, for example, in Sanguine Depths, where you're fighting the Overseer in those middle trash packs after the first boss, and they cast the chains on you. 
guess what? Rather than running away or LOSing or fell rushing away and then fell rushing back in and losing DPS, right? You're losing those seconds. What you can simply do is once they actually start casting that chain, you vengeful retreat back and you fell rush right back in. And that will save you so much DPS because especially if you precast immolation beforehand, then you're, you have to cast fell rush anyway, right? So this kind of serves as a two in one because now you're saving yourself some time and you're using your spells as efficiently as possible and you get rewarded for it. So whenever you're slowed, guys, don't forget your vengeful retreat, super, super powerful stuff. Definitely use it to your advantage. My fifth and final last but not least tip is that before you start a Mythic Plus run, you can precast spells such as uh, Metamorphosis. Most of you already knew that, but what you might not have known is that you can also precast your trinkets, such as Cash of Acquired Treasures. So if you pull up a turnip or some sort of dummy, or maybe you pull some ads, like in Plaguefall, you have some of those neutral ads right at the beginning, you can use the haste weapon, stack some haste, and then you can start the run with a lot of haste. So especially in streets of Tazavesh, where the pool is right there, right? So if you start with a ton of haste, you'll get 5, 10, 15 seconds of tons of haste. It's like 880 haste or so if you're using the heroic cache, and you can precast that and go into a fight with a full cooldown up so you you'll still be able to use it while also getting the benefit of for example haste if you use it on a turnip just before your mythic plus pool so definitely take advantage of that i hope these tips were helpful i wish i knew them when i started again like i said i didn't know some of these into my early 20s you know mid 20s so hope this was helpful for you and i will see you in the next video